Now, what do you call people who believe in things that are not there? 
The answer is mad people. Because although the Bible says that faith is a gift, it is not the gift of stupidity. You put your trust in someone if you are sure that they are real and true. Faith is always a response to truth and reality. God shines a light into this world so that we can see truth, so that we can see reality and respond to it. Faith is the only appropriate response to a God who is real and who has revealed himself and made himself known. Greetings. Thank you so much to, for, for your tuning in to Living Strong. It's our joy, our delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. Also pray with you. And it's our joy to be able to uh, serve you through the Word of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We trust that each program that comes your way is enriching your life, is helping you uh, become stronger, become better in your walk of faith with God. And, uh, uh, and we encourage you to stay tuned uh, so that in the weeks to come, we can grow together uh, as we bring each episode to you. We've been talking about faith and walking by faith over the last several weeks. Uh, as we've said before, uh, this is not necessarily a new subject area or a new topic for many of us. Uh, we've been taught, we've been trained in the area of faith uh, but it's good to come back and just remind ourselves of what the Bible teaches on the subject and what God has given, instruct, instructed us to walk in, how to walk in faith, what we must do in order to journey uh, by faith. On the program today, we want to talk about Abraham, the father of faith. It's so interesting that when we come into the New Testament, where we see a lot more teaching and a lot more um, uh, direction concerning faith and how we have to live by faith, uh, that the New Testament actually points back to Abraham, the uh, patriarch of the nation of Israel, uh, and, and points to him and says he is the father of faith. Follow his example. Uh, in Romans chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, the apostle Paul is writing. Uh, of course, Romans is a very wonderful uh, book where Paul is uh, explaining how we are saved by faith and, and the grace of God. And, and along that journey of explaining that, he points in Romans chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, he points to Abraham and he says that Abraham is the father of all who believe. In verse 12, therefore he tells us that we must walk in the steps of the faith which Abraham our father had. So Abraham is the father of all who believe. And we are called to walk in the steps of the faith, which Abraham demonstrated. And so we want to take some time on the program today to look at Abraham. How did he journey with God so that we could learn lessons on how we can walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham? Now, many of us are, are familiar with the life of Abraham. And very quickly, we just want to give a quick overview of uh, some of the key things in his life. You know, Abraham began not necessarily believing in Almighty God. Uh, he began uh, most likely as an idolater, worshipping idols and so on. Um, that was uh, who and he was in his family background and in the era of the Chaldees. Uh, that was what they did. But God spoke to him and God called him out of that. He said, get up out of your country and, and go uh, into uh, something that I have for you. So Abraham was called uh, into a divine purpose that God had for him. And Abraham began his life by simple faith and obedience. He went out, the Bible says, in response to God's call, and not knowing fully where he was going, but he knew, he knew God. He had heard the voice of God. He had to obey. And by simple faith and obedience, Abraham began his journey of faith. Now, along the way, Abraham made mistakes. He had doubts in his mind. How is God's promise going to be fulfilled? Uh, he, he had uh, failures. Uh, and uh, you, you, and I, you would be familiar with this story, of course, where Abraham was very old in age, and his wife Sarah was also old, and not only that, she was also barren 
from the time of her youth. So they had no children. But God is giving them a promise saying, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. And they didn't have a single child. But Abram obeyed the voice of God. He starts journeying out. And uh, along the way, he has doubts. You know, in Genesis 15, he's asking God, you know, how are you going to fulfill this promise? Uh, you know, how am I going to have a child? And God had to reassure him. Look at the stars. That's how many children I'm going to give you. I'm giving you my word. And he seals that word with a covenant. Uh, Abraham has failure. He lies about his wife and uh, twice just in order to preserve his own life. Uh, Abraham has doubts. And he sometimes, he even, on the advice of Sarah, they thought that maybe, you know, a child born in their house, not necessarily from them, uh, but through even their servant maid, maybe that's the child God is talking about. And God had to say, no, 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 no. It's going to come from both of you. You are going to have a child. So he, it wasn't easy. He had his weak moments. And yet he continued his journey and God encouraged him. Another interesting thing for both Abraham and Sarah is that God comes in and he tells them to change their names. Uh, now, you know, God doesn't do things at random uh, he doesn't wake up, you know, he didn't wake up one morning and say, no, I don't like their names. Let me change their names. No, everything God does, he does on purpose. So he told Abraham, change your name from Abram to Abraham. Abram meant exalted father. Abraham meant father of a multitude. So basically, say, Abraham, you change the way you speak and begin to call yourself as the one who you are in accordance to the promise that I've given you. I've said that you're going to be the father of a multitude. Now, I want you to base your identity on that. And I want you to start calling yourself according to what I've called you. Same thing with Sarah. Her uh, uh, original name was Sarai, which means princely. But God changed her name to Sarah, which means mother of princes. So she goes from just saying, calling herself princely to saying, I'm a mother of princes. For her identity and her vocabulary, her language, her uh, her confession changes because now she's calling herself what God has called her to be. She's beginning, both of them, Abraham and Sarah, begin to speak in line with the what word that God has given to them. So that is a very intentional, and therefore we must see it as a very important part of this journey of faith, that we must change our language to align our language, our speaking to the promise of God if we are going to walk uh, by faith in God. Now, eventually, we see wonderfully uh, that Abraham and Sarah, they received the promise. They saw Isaac being born, their only son. But yet, that was enough to be the beginning of a huge nation that would come out of them. They saw the promise of God fulfilled. God was faithful. Now, it took a, t a lot of time, 25 years from the time God, God said, I'm going to make you the father of a big nation, leave your land and go out. 25 years later, the promise actually happened. Why did God take so long? Uh, why did God let them wait so long? We don't have all the answers. But God is saying, that's the kind of faith I want you to walk by. Hebrews chapter 6 points back to Abraham and says, we must follow the example. And we, through faith and endurance, or faith and patience, we possess the promise. We inherit the promise. So God is able to point to Abraham and say there was faith, but there was also patience. And that's how we possess the promise. And that's the same thing with you and me today, that we must have faith and endurance of patience in order to possess the promise of God. And uh, um, as we progress in Abraham's life, we also see that God brought him to that place of obedience. You know, God said, Abraham, you take Isaac and offer him up as a sacrifice. Now, that was a big deal because this was their only son. And God is saying, let me see, are you going to obey? And the Bible says God tested Abraham in Genesis 22. So Abraham actually takes Isaac up, willing to offer him as a sacrifice because he had reached the point where he absolutely knew that God will keep his word. That even if he were to offer up Isaac, God will raise him up back to life because God said, that's the miracle, baby. That's the boy through which you're going to have descendants as numerous as the stars as the stars and the sky and sand on the seashore. That's the child. So for Abraham, he was so convinced that even if he was to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice, God will bring Isaac back to life because God's word is on the matter. And so he was willing to do that. His faith and obedience had now gone to a new level. And that's where he received the revelation 
of God as being Jehovah Jireh, the Lord being provider. Every new level of faith and obedience gives us a new revelation of who God is, and Abraham experienced that. And the beautiful thing of, of, of this entire journey of Abraham's faith is in the New Testament, in James chapter 2 and verse 23, the Bible calls Abraham as a friend of God. So he, he, he was not just a father of faith, but he, he is pointed as, here's a man who was a friend of God. Imagine a man living in idolatry ends up becoming not only the father of faith, but he becomes a friend of God. And the Bible is pointing to Abraham as an example, both of faith and of friendship with God. So I believe God wants that to be developed in our lives. Faith in God, friendship with God. They are parallel. And if you will, you can look at it as two sides of the same coin. The stronger your friendship with God is, the stronger your faith in God is going to be. Faith in God, friendship with God, they go hand in hand. Now, let's delve a little bit more into the specifics of Abraham's faith. And this is captured for us in Romans chapter 4, verses 17 to 21, as the Apostle Paul uh, uh, tries to sum up for us in a very, very uh, concise way, in a nutshell, uh, the steps of the faith of Abraham. Just prior to this, in verses 12, in 11 and 12, he said, Abraham is a father of all who believe, and we must walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. And so now in verses 17 to 21 of Romans 4, Paul is writing to us the steps of the faith of Abraham. And it's good for us to just look at it very carefully. So verse 17 tells us, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Beautiful summary, concise summary of the steps of the faith of Abraham. It all begins in verse 17 when Abraham recognized who God is. Uh, he says, in the presence of him whom he believed. So Abraham's faith was not just in a technique. It was not just in himself. It was not in himself. It was not a mind over matter thing. It was not, you know, I just believe and it'll happen kind of a thing. No, in the presence of God whom he believed. Whom was Abraham believing? What was Abraham believing? He believed God. He believed the promise of God. That's the basis of faith. God himself and God's word. What God had spoken, God said, I have made you the father of many nations. That's what Abraham believed. God is the one who gives life to the dead and who brings into being what does not exist. That's the one whom he believed. So verse 17 tells us that this is how faith is birthed. We believe God, we believe His Word. Who is God to you? He is the, like here it says, God is the one who gives life to what is dead. God is the one who brings into existence what does not. He calls things that do not exist as though they were. And we must know in whom we believe and in what He has spoken. For Abraham, He said, I'm making you the father of a great nation. So that's how faith began for Abraham. That's how faith always begins for us. When we look at God, the one in whom we believed, and what he has spoken to us, the word he's given to us. And then in verse 18, it says, who against hope, he believed in hope. See, there are many times we have to believe when there is no hope, we still have to believe in hope. So there is no reason to believe, there is no reason to expect, but yet 
in hope you believe. But it's not just something baseless. It's not just something fanciful. It's not just a wish and a wishy-washy kind of a thing. No, it says he believed so that he became according to what was spoken. The word of God here again became the basis of what he believed. So he believed against all hope. He believed when there was no hope. What is your situation? that you're believing God to change. The promises of God in the Bible are numerous and they cover every aspect of our lives. Now, if there is something in my life, something in our lives that does not align itself with the promise of God, then that's a situation that we can change by faith, that by faith that can be changed. Sometimes there is no hope in that situation. It may be hopeless. Maybe it's a physical condition, a financial situation, a relationship situation, a home situation, whatever. It may be hopeless, against all hope. But Abraham believed God because God had given him a promise. Because the word of God has a promise for you for that situation. And he believed God in hope. That's an important step of faith. That even when there is no hope, even when it is hopeless, you still believe God because of the promise that is there in the Bible concerning that situation. Then. Verse 19, it says, And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body that was dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So, here's another important step. He didn't let his faith weaken by the circumstances. What were the circumstances? He was old, 90 years old, or 100 years old. He was old. Sarah was old and barren. So the odds were against this whole possibility of having a child. But he did not let the natural situations dictate his faith. His faith was dictated not by the situation, but his faith was dictated by the word of God. So he says he did not become weak in faith when he saw that his body was old, Sarah was old and barren. He is not denying the fact. He's not denying, you know, this is the situation, but he's not letting the situation dictate his faith. He did not become weak in faith. His faith was established in God and in God's word. Then we see in verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So he didn't let unbelief come. You see, unbelief will come knocking at the door. Doubts will come knocking. How can God do this? Can this really change? Is God's promise really true? Will God really do this in your life? All kinds of doubts will come. People may be there around you who may cause doubts. Uh, Sometimes when you're alone, doubts come, the thoughts come. But it says he didn't waver in faith through the doubts or through the unbelief. That means the doubts came, but he continued to choose to stand firm in faith. So you and I must make the choice. That's an important step in walking in faith. When doubts come, you make a choice. No, my God is real. His promise is good. My God will not fail. My God is true to his word. God's word will not fail. So you don't let doubts cause you to waver in faith. And the next thing he did is a wonderful thing to do. He became strong in his faith, giving glory to God. That means he began to praise God. To give glory to God means to praise God. It means to worship God. It means to just give him thanks, give him praise. So as he began to praise God, as he began to worship God for who he is, for being faithful to his promise, he became strong in faith. You see, this is a powerful thing to do. Learn to praise God. Learn to worship God for who he is. Learn to recognize who God is. That itself strengthens your faith. That keeps doubts away. Then you don't waver in your faith. So worship God. is a, Worshiping God is a very important part of our walk of faith. And lastly, in verse 21, it says, he came to this place where he was fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. So imagine, he came to this place where he was totally convinced. He said in his journey, he had doubts, He had failures, and we all will have that. But he didn't stop there. He kept journeying. He kept journeying. And finally, he came to this place where he was fully convinced 
at what God had promised, he'll be able to perform. And then he saw his miracle. And that's the steps, those are the steps of faith that God says, I want you to follow that. I want you to imitate Abraham. Do what he did. And you too will come to the place where you are so fully convinced of the promises of God for your life. And that's the point. Then things happen. The promises of God become fulfilled. And you will see them become a reality in your life. Trust that you enjoyed the program today and our examination of the steps of the faith of Abraham, who was the father of us all. I want to encourage you to take a hold of God's word. Find out the promises of God. Those areas where you need to see the work of God, where you need to see the miracle of God, take those promises and do what Abraham did. And you too will see the word of God becoming a reality. You too will see dead things come to life. You too will see that God will bring into existence what does not exist right now. God will do it for you and for me. He is no respecter of persons. His word is truth. Let's pray. Father, I pray for those listening. And I pray faith will arise in our hearts that we too, like Abraham, will take a hold of your word and against all hope believe until we see the promise fulfilled. Help us to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.